the sentence? Yes, I'm sorry. Well, she'll end up serving about 10 months, and 10 months is a lot better than the 50 years that she was originally exposed to. She was looking at the same sentence as Tom Petters. Were you expecting to possibly get no prison time? Sure. Were you expecting to possibly get no prison time? Well, I was hoping that she would receive no prison time at all. Um, but uh, what she got was the next best thing. Talk to me about this little debate that was going on between Joe Dixon and Judge Kyle about uh, sort of this hollowed promise you almost talked about. The government uh, chose not to make the recommendation for a no prison sentence. Their assessment of her cooperation was extremely laudatory. Ultimately, the decision on the sentence is up to the judge. So even if the government had recommended a no prison disposition for Ms. Coleman, that decision was up to Judge Kyle not the government. But was the, was that pre-sentence, or should I say that, that, uh, is it disingenuous? It's an interesting question. I, I don't know if it was. The government's uh, position papers that were filed with the court couldn't have been more flattering to Ms. Coleman. What more could she have done? What were they expecting? Why not? Make the recommendation for no prison time. You'll have to ask them. Well, she's, you know, she's not happy. No one would be happy about doing any amount of prison time. But in the general scheme of things, um, she feels fortunate. Uh, the situation could have been infinitely worse. Was she prepared for jail time? Oh, absolutely. Mr. Captain, you said this earlier, but can you encapsulate a little bit more as to what your client told the court today? What? What did she tell the court today about... You mean in terms of her position with respect to sentencing? Well, and, and the apology. Well, oh, her apology was basically, my actions speak louder than words. I can say I'm sorry, but my behavior uh, demonstrates how sorry I am for the behavior I engaged in when I worked for the Petters Corporation. She, you know, interestingly enough, Deanna Coleman had other options before she went to the government. She was a person who had millions of dollars readily disposable in bank accounts. Uh, she could have cashed in her chips, she could have gone to any one of 80 countries that don't have extradition treaties with the United States and live the rest of her life in the lap of luxury. But she chose not to do that. She chose to do the right thing and uh, went to the government and tried to make amends. And over the span of two years, her cooperation was staggering. It was at this point in time, it's about 450 hours. She went through hundreds of boxes of documents seized from the Petters Corporation and pointed out to the government agents which papers were relevant, which weren't. She went through thousands of emails and uh, pointed out which ones were useful and which weren't. She traced the $3.5 billion loss as only, uh, she was the only person other than Tom Petters who would have been capable of doing that, and he was not about to cooperate. So her cooperation was staggering, and in the spirit of action speak louder than words, uh, her actions were demonstrative of how deeply sorry she really was about her involvement in this whole Ponzi scheme. Yeah, she was very nervous. This has been hanging over her head for, her life has been in limbo for two years. Um, 
But, you know, we just talked briefly after the sentencing, and she has absolutely no regrets about uh, what she did in terms of her cooperation and coming forward. And she realizes that she participated in a massive Ponzi scheme, and, you know, she's accepting of the consequences. You, you spoke uh, to the judge about the need uh, to use this as an example to bring other whistleblowers forward that are intimately involved in a Ponzi scheme, and you said not giving her prison time would do just that. Do you think that this sentence also does that? Does it encourage future whistleblowers? It encourages future whistleblowers only if they're aware of the potential 50-year prison sentence that they're facing. The problem is the average person has no idea what lies in the store for them under the federal sentencing guidelines. And, you know, I, I would like to think that had she received a no-prison sentence, it might have been more encouraging to future whistleblowers to come forward, but who knows? If someone knew they were facing a 30 or 50 year prison sentence, uh, and they knew that they would uh, gain some benefit by coming forward, uh, no doubt they would. But most people aren't aware of the potential uh, lengthy prison sentences that lie in store for them. Yeah, sure. First of all, the uh, Bureau of Prisons decides where a person goes. But a judge can make a recommendation. And the reason we uh, chose to have the recommendation of Pecan, Illinois, is that it's a camp. It's like Duluth for men. It's much less onerous than other types of prisons. No, we have no, she has no intention of appealing. And can you describe the process that she will have to go through uh, when she gets out and starts earning money and gets into a restitution order? How does that work? Well, the, the problem uh, that she faces, I mean, this restitution order will be hanging over her for a lengthy period of time. The problem is that now that she's a convicted felon, uh, you know, what kind of job is she going to be able to get and how much income will she be able to generate, uh, certainly it's unlikely that uh, she would be able to generate enough income to pay off a $3.5 billion uh, debt obligation. Does that get forgiven after a while? Is it a limitation on the number of years that can be imposed? And how much uh, percentage can they take out of your check? Uh, you know, I'm not sure of the exact particulars of how much can be taken and, and how long it would last, so I don't want to just shoot from the hip. I'm sorry? Well, she's... She's given up every cent that she had. She's penniless. She um, uh, has already given up, I think, four and a half million dollars 